All right, FAQ number 62. You can turn your Bible to Luke chapter 2. Uh, the question comes up, saved teens versus lost parents. If you are a teenager and your family is lost, but you yourself are saved, and you know you could even be preteen as well. I know there have been some uh, really young people that have contacted the ministry here, and, and uh, it just amazes me. You know, you get younger people that they get saved and they really start to study the truth. And uh, I, I'll tell you what, there's some really sharp um, young people out there. And uh, but what do you do? What do you do when you have family members and you're the only one who's saved and everybody else is lost in your family? Well, Luke chapter 2, uh, we're not going to look at verse 33 there, the infamous uh, verse that's another one that you can point out the obvious error in the new versions because the King James says, Joseph and his mother, referring to Jesus Christ, you know, that you know, they, they came there, Joseph and his mother came. But the new versions, they'll say the child's father and mother. Uh, Joseph was not the father of Jesus. So, a little subtle attack of Satan there. But, um, very interesting here. Uh, if you jump down to verse 49, uh, well, we'll go, actually go up to verse 48. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Okay, now she lied right in front of everybody there. She doesn't say, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing, meaning God the Father, because obviously God the Father doesn't need to seek where Jesus is. He knows where he is. God's omnipresent. So who's she talking about? She's talking about Joseph. It's interesting that your King James Bible has a lowercase f there on father. And next, when Jesus responds, it's a capital F, because he's referring to God the Father. Look at verse 49. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Hmm. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. Um, if you're a teenager, a saved teenager, and you have lost family members, you're going to be able to relate to that very, very well. Okay? You're going to have those times where you're like out putting out a gospel tract and, you're, and your lost parents are like, What are you doing? Well, I'm just doing the Lord's work here. And, they, and they, they don't understand. They're just, no, you're just spreading propaganda. You're shoving your religion down other people's throats. You'll get that kind of thing. You know, that's what's going to happen. But look what happens here. Verse 51, And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. Okay? Jesus had to submit himself to the fact that he is living under their roof. All right. Now, when you are a young teenager, when you, before 18, before you can say, okay, I'm an officially no longer a minor, uh, you know, I can go out and get my job and you know, be on my own and whatever else. Before that time, and you're living in your parents' house, you're going to have to be subject unto them. Okay. You say, well, but I don't understand. This is This seems to be... A contradictory type of a thing. How can I live with lost people and be subject unto them when it causes me to be in conflict with my beliefs as a Christian? Well, you know, in, in certain areas, if they tell you to do something that's clearly forbidden in Scripture, then you have to very respectfully say to them, Dad, Mom, I can't do this. It violates my beliefs as a Christian. I'm not going to go to that movie theater with you and watch that R-rated movie. Or any movie, really. I mean, the stuff that comes out of Hollywood nowadays is just satanic garbage. You know, uh, Dad, Mom, I'm not going to sit down and watch television. I'm going to go, you know, do something else. Well, it's family movie night. Well, you know, no thank you. I'm not interested. I don't, you know, the Bible's... And if they say why, don't just say, well, because I don't want to, because I said so. No, show them from Scripture. Uh, take them to the verse that, that talks about, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. You know, abstain from all appearance of evil. You know, there's, I mean... Look these things up, okay? And you say, well, that sounds like I should study then. Study the Word of God while I'm living at home like this. Look at verse 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. If you're a saved teen living with lost a lost family, lost parents, lost siblings, um, the thing that you need to work on is increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Learn skills. 
you know, if you get saved and you end up, you know, just you really don't make much of a change in terms of, of how you act around your parents and things, you're going to have a hard time convincing them that there's been that change in your life. Uh, the best thing that you can do is if you're saved, show your parents that Jesus Christ, you know, has when he came into your life and, and saved you, that it's changed more than just your beliefs, spiritual beliefs. Show them that you can keep your room clean. Show them that you can help out around the house. Show them that you are now a diligent worker. Um, learn to do things with your hands. Uh, it's, it's very important. And, you know, say, you know, Dad, Mom, I respect the fact that you're doing so much for me and that you're putting food on the table and putting clothes on my back and taking care of me. You know, so I'm going to reward you with, with working hard around here. Uh, those skills are going to help you later on in life. You know, doing chores and things like that, it might not seem very much fun sometimes, but developing a great work ethic is extremely important. And you read in the Bible that, that Joseph was a carpenter. And uh, they, they, people different times will say, isn't this the carpenter's son, you know, referring to Jesus? But Jesus is also car called a carpenter himself. So what's that tell you? That tells you that Jesus Christ was helping out Joseph. And I'm sure that Joseph probably taught him some good things, taught him how to work, had a good work ethic. You know, a lot of, a lot of youths, you know, they, they try to get into this thing of saying, when I'm 18, when I go out on my own, I'm going to go to some Bible seminary someplace and I'm going to go into ministry. I'm going to pastor a church or something when I'm 21 years old. You know, Bob Jones Sr. was pastoring, he was preaching when he was 13. You're not old enough to, to preach at that age. It, it's, you know, that's ridiculous. Okay. And, and you say, well, then I shouldn't study the Bible in my youth, in my, in my teens. Oh, no, you should study the Bible. But it should be along with learning to work hard and get that good work ethic. That's so important, you know. And, you know, another thing I want to say is, if you're being forced to go to some Babel building someplace that you can't stand, um, spend the time learning how not to do things, you know. Um, I used to have a statement that I'd make with my wife and, and things, we kind of joke about it, and I'd say, uh, it's L and L. And I remember I said that to her the one time just to be kind of funny, and she said, what? What are you talking about? I said, look and learn. There's a lot of things, when you go to Babel buildings, you can look and learn. And you can see why these places are corrupt. And you can go in there, and, and you know, if you get into some Sunday school thing or youth meeting or something like that, Ask them questions. Ask these youth leaders questions. You're going to find out that the leadership in most Babel buildings, and almost all Babel buildings, I should say, most of the leadership, they don't have a clue how to rightly divide the word of truth. They don't have a clue about basic Bible doctrines. You know, youth ministry, and I'll say this yet, and then, you know, got to keep it going here because I'm going to be under 15 minutes, but youth, most youth ministries are about giving the world to teens fun activities, fun things, uh, neat things that you can do and whatever. And you know what teens want? From my experience, my own personal experience, and from my experiences of, of writing back and forth with teenagers through this ministry, teens want truth. They want it. Just give me the facts. I want to be talked to like an adult. I don't want to be treated like a little baby. Tell me the truth. Be blunt. Be brutal. Be honest with me. That's what teens want. I can tell you all my years of going to youth group meetings and I was, you know, forcibly made to go because you have to go to church every time the doors are open. I was raised that way. And, you know, Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday evening, all that stuff. I can honestly tell you the only youth meetings that I remember anything even that was said, there was, a, I think, two different times. Sunday school, the one time there was a guy came in and talked about creation science. And he was talking about some really hardcore stuff, you know, that there were dinosaurs in the Garden of Eden and stuff like this. Things I wasn't being taught in public school, you know. And I was like, I mean, I was just listening intently to this thing. The second time there was a guy that came to my youth group when I was a teenager. And, you know, I was a cool heavy metal guy. I had long hair and black t-shirt with skulls on and stuff like this. And, and this guy was talking about Satanism. And he pointed right at me and my buddies that were all heavy metal guys. And he said... You guys are being deceived into listening to satanic music. There's no such thing as Christian heavy metal. And he was talking about automatic writing and, and all kinds of stuff, you know, straight out of the occult. And I was very interested. 
those are the only two youth meetings I ever, ever can remember. All the other stuff was just little nice devotionals from the Bible and then let's go play games and let's have fun and sports and whatever else. That's ridiculous. And if you're a teen being forced to go through that stuff, you know, study the Bible. Watch these videos. Watch, you know, the videos on this channel. Watch videos on other Bible-believing channels out there. Study, study, study. And learn how to work hard with your hands. Help out around the house. Those are the types of things that you should do. And again, you know, look at Jesus Christ. Part of his upbringing was in Egypt. Uh, I'm pretty sure he saw some pretty bad stuff there. And he didn't say, oh, I'm going to run away from my parents because I want to be a good Bible believer and whatever. He stayed there and was subject unto them. Verse 51. So that's my advice to you. Um, please continue in the things of the Lord. We, we do pray for a lot of the teenagers out there that watch this channel. And uh, it's just such an encouragement when we hear from you. I love to hear from, from young people. And I know, I know it's, a, it's a real struggle to be in a saved person in a lost home. Uh, and your whole family just thinks that you're nuts and crazy and everything else. And, and you're thinking to yourself, you know, I just wish I had somebody out there to encourage me. Uh, well, you have the Lord. And sometimes that might be all that you have. But really, it's not all that you have. It's everything that you have because God is everything and he can provide for you and you know you grow up through your teens uh, studying the Bible studying truth and going through look and learn situations uh, God will use you greatly someday I only wish I could go back to my youth and uh, actually study truth um, I mean there was no such thing as the internet when I was young when I was a teenager I had no access to any kind of truth and so I fell for a lot of worldly deceptions and things. And it wasn't until I was 25 years old that I got saved. I was a false convert all through my teenage years, going to a Bible building. So that's going to be it for this FAQ. Again, a very good question.